Hi everyone, Ironclad Cobra here and welcome to another GPI Case 2 video. As I mentioned in the previous video, I'll do another video like what I'm doing today just to showcase the operating system, the Linux custom firmware that I'm going to apply on the device and then if I have a chance I'll just share some gameplay as well. When it comes to gameplay, it's worth noticing that this chipset, the Raspberry Pi 4, it has a similar performance to the Rock chip or RK3326, which means all the games up to PS1, PSP, Dreamcast, N64, but probably the lighter or the 2D titles. But I personally am not planning to run anything past PS1 because the screen is, you know, quite small, 3 point uh, inch screen or 3.0 screen and normally when I love to play PSP games or higher I would prefer a screen that is 4 inch and bigger so my goal is just to run the old classic systems you know Atari, Sega, NES, SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color so I think that's my main intention to run uh, or, or get this device and as you see it's a Game Boy uh, you know design anyway so it will be great to run the Game Boy games on it now regarding the custom firmware I as I mentioned in the previous video I was planning to run Barocera on the device but since Barocera doesn't have an official build for the GPI case 2 they already have one for GPI case the previous one but it won't work on the case 2 and I have to then install or run the Raspberry Pi 4B image and I have to do some workaround running some scripts and I thought since I don't have a background in tech it might be a bit, a bit intimidating for me so therefore I decided to give recall box a try so that's another reason to try recall box on my channel you know you've seen many videos I'm running or setting up Barocera on devices but I've never done any guide on recall box so I think it will be a great chance to run recall box speaking of recall box uh, it's quite easy to get the image file you simply go to retroflag.com their official website I'll include everything in the video description all the links you need and from there you just scroll down on the left they have a section that takes you to OS or recallbox.com and once you go to recall box you just follow the instructions of the download image and you technically need to download the image for the CM4 which is 9.2.3 Pulsar. don't worry I'll keep everything in the video description that will tell you or take you directly to the download section so I'm running recall box I'm quite excited and I, as I always mention you just need to get a micro SD card and as you've seen in the previous video I'm using a 256 gigabyte micro SD card as you always need to do you just put it in your PC uh, you download the CM4 image recall box image you unzip the image to get the image file and then you can use an app called Rufus or Belena Etcher I used Rufus I think both are the same so you just need to burn write copy the recall box image onto the SD card of course if the SD card is new you can just use it right away but if it's a used SD card you need to format it once you have the image file copied on the micro SD card you take it out of the PC and then I'll show you now how to put it in the device we'll also show you how to have the CM4 in the device as well and as I mentioned in the previous video it's quite simple you don't have to take any screws out you know I think they've done great job in the design as you see here the CM4 module this is where your CM4 will go and it's also inspired by the beautiful Game Boy cartridge design you just remove it as you see here there's also enough space to install a heatsink if you need you don't have to but if you want you can do that 
You don't need to open the device either, unless you want to as well. So as you see here, we have the outlines, where it shows you how to trace your CM4. So it should be like this. But before we do that, we can also do the SD card here. There is this hinge system. I personally recommend using a guitar pick or a prying tool as I'm using here. As you see here, the hinge has an open and lock mechanism. So if, you, if I push it upwards this way, it's going to open. And if I push it downwards this way, it will lock it. So now we need to push it downwards to, uh, sorry, upwards, as you see here, to unlock it. So the hinge opens, as you see here. And once the hinge is open, we can put in the micro SD card here. You have to be a bit gentle, as I mentioned, because it's quite sensitive. And once the micro SD card is in the shape or in the place, we just lock in the hinge. Just give me a sec. So once the SD card in, you can just press the hinge downwards with a gentle force and then pull it downwards as well with the prying tool. So you can hear a little click. That means it's locked now. So the SD card is safe and secure in the SD card tray. So that means it's in place. Now if you go to the CM4, it's the same procedure. You just take it and line it up with the outlines here and with the mounting where the mounting openings are, as you see here. And it goes directly in without using any screws. You, d you just snap it in with applying a gentle force. As you can see here, you can use a prying tool as well or a guitar pick. And as you see here now, the CM4 is in place. It's not moving or wobbling. That means it's in the right direction. So that would be it. And then we just close in the lid here. And there you go. Now the device is ready to start up or to fire up. As you see here, let's go. So the first boot might take a bit longer, don't worry, we'll just wait for recall box to boot up. There we go. Awesome. With the logo of the recall box. It's loading the systems now. There we go. Cool. So we are ready. The operating system now is on the device, as you see. But I'm guessing it's bare bones. That means we have to copy our ROMs and BIOS files. Unfortunately, as I always mention in my videos, I cannot share any links to download ROMs and BIOS because those are copyrighted. But if you do a Google search, it will show you where to get them from. So these are the systems, as you see. We have all the classic systems. I'm just running down the system so you can see what it has. 
Atari, my all-time favorites. Commodore 64, ColecoVision as well, Sega Game Gear, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Intellivision, Atari Lynx as well, MAME, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, Microsoft MSX, MSX2, Neo Geo, NES, PC Engine, Turbo Graphics 16, Pokemon Mini, Scum VM, Sega 1000, Super Nintendo SNES, Thompson, Tick 80, Vectrex, ZX Spectrum, Sinclair, and also it has ports as well. And Commodore Amiga 600, as well as Amstrad CPC. Okay. So if you click on a system, as you see, it has just one or two games. As I mentioned, we have to add our ROMs and BIOS files to make it full. I'll do that, and then I'll share, uh, you know, how we transfer the ROMs and BIOS. I'll see if we can try uh, the SD card, if we can take the SD card out and put it in our PC, if there is a file partition to copy the ROMs and BIOS, otherwise we can also do the SFTP or the file transfer over the Wi-Fi, over your network, as I do or as I show in Barocera. I'll see how it goes. As I mentioned, this is the first time I install Recallbox OS. So I'll find out and share with you how to transfer the ROMs and BIOS files. So let's shut down the system. Select. Shut down system. To do a save shutdown. And there we go. So let me just find out what's the best option to transfer the ROMs and BIOS and I'll keep you posted. So it turns out that you can copy your BIOS and ROMs on your PC. So I took out the micro SD card from the device, put it on my PC. Once you put it in your PC, you will see that after the first boot into Rico box, the recall box uh, boot up will extend the file partition on the device and then it will create subfolders. So once you take the SD card out from the device and put it back into your PC, you will see a partition called share. And once you go in share, you will see multiple folders and one of the folders will be ROMs and another folder will be BIOS. So in the ROMs folder on share, you will see all the game systems that you have to copy your ROMs. And there will also be a BIOS folder as well, where you can transfer or copy your BIOS. So just to test in the video, I copied a couple of PS1 games. So let me just show you. Turning on the device. I think that was an easy thing to transfer the ROMs and BIOS so we don't have to do it over the Wi-Fi or through SFTP that we normally do with Barocera and I think this is very similar to another very popular Linux custom firmware which is Amber Alec where you can have another folder when the file partition is extended and you can directly copy your ROMs and BIOS on your PC. And of course, Amber Lake is one of my favorite.
custom firmware from Linux. So let me just navigate to PS1. There you go, PlayStation. As you see, I still didn't uh, scrape box art, but I just have the games to show you. Let's do Hercules, one of my favorite Disney games. Awesome. I love this game. I got the so, let me just ask, is this kid gonna mess up my hostile takeover bit or what? What do you think? Oh, um, I know. It's a win it's supposed to reveal. Awesome. Rule number 95, kid. Concentrate. Okay, wow, that was really cool. I'm really happy that I got this device. As I mentioned earlier, this is not a cheap system. As I said, if you like tinkering, you know, tweaking, enjoying Linux custom firmware, this is really a cool device. Now, I just wanted to share with you a quick PS1 gameplay. As I mentioned, the chipset on the GPI case 2 is very similar to the RK3326 uh, from Rockchip. And there are many videos on my channel you can check out if you know that plays those systems. And as I mentioned, I'm not planning to play anything past PS1. So I think that would be for today. Feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And always remember, we don't stop gaming because we grow old. We grow old because we stop gaming.